Will do. Um, well, we're coming off uh, our fifth championship in the last six years, so uh, we're in a good place. Um, moving into the 2019 season, uh, we've lost some key ingredients. Um, we're going to have to replace some uh, key components, losing to Chase Calabug, uh, Dean Navarez, a Jordan Verdon, um, David Hensley. Those guys have kind of been mainstays the last three or four years, so we got to kind of upgrade the program from where they were, and that's kind of the idea of what we went into recruiting this this current class is kind of upgrade the athleticism not that those guys were bad but trying to get better in order to win a regional and i think that's the next step for our program is to get into a regional continue to play in the postseason and the next step is to win a regional and give us an opportunity to to play past the regional play in a super and get to omaha that's the expectation of our program is play for a national championship and we're working on it so we've upgraded in a lot of areas um, starting with, you know, with uh, Logan Boyer being our Friday night guy. Can run the ball up there anywhere from 94 to 96 miles an hour. Um, the key with him is, uh, is uh, having a Friday night roll uh, means that he needs to, get, needs to get deep into games in order to pass the baton onto the very, very strong pitching staff. So we're very excited about our pitching staff moving in this year. It's an experienced staff with Logan kind of anchoring the, the, the Friday night position and Harrison Pyatt on Saturdays and a, a graduate's transfer um, from USC, um, Brad Wegman. So pretty good pitching. We've got a great closer, freshman All-American, uh, Casey Schmidt. I think he had a .27 ERA or point something last year. Only gave up one run. That was on an intentional walk. Okay, so that's one of those bloopers you see on ESPN. <coughs> uh, and so they've eliminated that rule. We don't have to throw the intentional walks anymore, much like the Major League. So we can hopefully avoid that this year. Um, but... Uh, He's going to be our closer. Um, we have a, a, a wealth of pitching, whether it's uh, experienced guys or new guys coming in our program. We're very excited about that. And then replacing some of those key components. Losing a Dean Navarez, who's, who's caught for the last two seasons and won some rings. It's a pretty good deal. Um, uh, Ryan Orr and Joe Fitch are kind of battling that out. Um, one, Joe's from Las Vegas. Ryan Orr's from... Here's locally in San Diego. Um, first base, we have to replace Jordan Verdon, who's played just about every game his first three years. So we're doing that with the freshman and Brian Leonhart coming from Eastlake. Um, and then our middle infield is going to look a little different as well. We have a graduate transfer at shortstop, um, fifth year senior, Angela Armenta from USC. Uh, Mike Jarvis uh, is a transfer from Saddleback Junior College. We also have Jacob McCowa, who's uh, played every game at second base last year. So those two guys are kind of competing for that job. And then, of course, Casey Schmidt. And our outfield is very strong. we got Julian Escobedo who's playing center field. And Matt Ruddick, um, who should have been an, a freshman All-American last year, at 319 as a freshman. And so um, the, the idea of putting this group together, I skipped right field. We haven't figured that one out yet. But the idea is, is uh, for us to upgrade athletically to compete on a national level. And we, we found that out the last couple of years. And we, when we won our first championship in 2013, we were extremely excited. It was awesome. It was the first one in many, many years. Um, 14, kind of the same thing. We, we kind of pulled some spring, strings and smoke and mirrored a little bit. 15, we made some noise up at Lake Elsinore. Uh, we had a bad year in 16. And then the last two years, we kind of figured out we have to um, figure out how to compete nationally, and that's upgrading our athleticism, our run ability, um, and then, of course, the pitching piece has, has upgraded drastically, um, and so we're very excited about that moving into the season. Mark, when you say upgrade <coughs> athletically, athletics in, in basketball, you think, you know, bigger, stronger, jump higher, football, similar things. Kind of expand on what you mean athletically with athletes. Well, number number one, speed, obviously, but I yeah. think it's more just you know bad ability, you know, ma making more contact, or creating havoc offensively. I think that's a big deal for us. Uh, we have an uh, uh, upgraded offense. We want our guys to run and create havoc. Those kinds of things. Um, the other part of that is is making big plays defensively. You know, and the, the only way we can do that is being very athletic. Um, we've done a great job making the routine plays. Um, that, that translates into a lot of wins. Um, but uh, to win at a higher level, you've got to make those dynamic playing plays in big moments. And that's kind of where we, you know, we lost the game at, at Long Beach, against Long Beach, and we got um, beat athletically. And, and it kind of lost us a game. And kind of the same thing last year when we played LSU. 
Um, we're, we're in position to win that game, and we got beat athletically. And I think upgrading that point is not to say that the guys before were, were bad baseball players by any means. It's just kind of upgrading in order to compete on a national level. We feel, feel like we should be um, the favorite to win the conference every single year, not just now, but every single year. It's kind of where we put the program. And um, the next piece is that we, we feel like this is a team that can make some noise, not only regionally, but, but nationally. Do you go into this season with a, a little chip on your shoulder because of all the things you've just said? <clears throat> Absolutely. I think, you know, we, you know I, don't, I don't know if it's like the New England Patriots, shout out to Martin, um, you know, kind of, kind of where people are disrespecting them, so to speak. I think it's more that, that uh, uh, our guys, the culture of our baseball program has grown to the point to where we expect to, to win the conference. But the next step is that we're going in with purpose in a regional. And, and I think we're trying to kind of get rid of that happy ha – it's great to win championships, don't get me wrong. Um, still be happy with that, but, but get past that kind of that fake finish line of winning a conference tournament and get past that regional. And we feel like we're getting to that point. So, so it's, it's been a long process. You know, I've been here for going on my 14th year, my fifth year as a, a head coach. And it's been a big process, a long process to kind of change the culture of the program, the mindset of what you're talking about. Um, we expect to win the conference year in, year out. We're not hoping to win that thing. We expect to win it. The next piece is that we're putting us, our program in a position to win a regional. Logan, there's a little weight on your shoulders if you listen to what the coach is saying. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I think that the big part is that not so much that we're going into it knowing we're going to win, but expecting to win because of what previously has happened throughout the years. And the guys this year, like with the fall and all the strength and all that stuff that has been upgraded, we're going into the season a lot stronger. And I think that's where the expecting to win the conference championships and so on is coming from. You still have to do it. You're the Friday guy. You're the point guy. How do you like that position? Uh, it's a very humbling, but I'm excited to hopefully start the season off good and give the team a good start to every weekend. Coach, you mentioned uh, when you were running down your team uh, a few transfers, uh, a couple of graduate transfers. Mm -hmm. where, where is the, uh, where's college baseball in terms of the transfer? Obviously, the basketball program here kind of helped build itself with the transfers. Uh, is that something that you look into more and try to expand? Um, not so much more. You know, I think our program, you know, culturally has built, been built on recruiting high school kids. You know, that's kind of where we got to a point where we're bringing in um, the right fit. He's a great example. He came from high school. But, uh, you know, I think there's times when you get in a program, you might have to plug in some holes, and that's where we're at. The transfer piece in baseball um, currently right now, even if you want to transfer, you still have to sit out a year. You know, and so it's, it's, uh, it's difficult. It mir mirrors what basketball d does. So um, it's difficult to do that in our sport, to wait a year for a guy to come in. So the graduates transfers make sense because they're el eligible right away. Um, and then the junior college transfers, we kind of sprinkle those in on the mound. And then in this case this year, we, we found a really dynamic player, local, lo local product, and Mike Jarvis to come in and, and uh, upgrade our athleticism. He's a, he's a dynamic runner. But uh, um, we don't really rely too heavily on the transfer piece but unless it's a ne necessity. So the two guys from USC, um, uh, we're very fortunate to get them. You know, they, they, they're coming from a pretty good program. Um, but uh, they're here to kind of uh, take advantage of a great opportunity for them personally and also help our team, you know, hopefully realize our goals as well. Anything else? Logan, how are you feeling? I mean, I know you've had some injury setbacks the last couple of years. How are you feeling heading into the season? Uh, I'm very excited. <laughs> Everything feels healthy. I feel strong. I stayed back this summer, lifted a lot with our strength and conditioning coach. And no problems, I'm ready to go. What's been the hardest part about the last couple of years? I wouldn't call it hard. I would just say it's different, and you just have to accept it to what it is and go about your business with can't focus on the past, but rather help yourself for the future. He's had some challenges, you know, you know as far as um, the injury, so to speak. You know, I think. Uh, He's handled it great, you know, and making a decision to stay back this past summer and, 
And even over the winter break, you know, we, we have our guys go on a winter break, our pitchers wanting them to take some time off over the break. Um, he made a decision to kind of keep going and keep grinding because uh, he didn't want to get another thing where he had to restart the engines coming back this spring. So his first couple of outings have been exceptionally good. Um, what I will tell you is our first two inner squad weekends, um, I'm a really bad hitting coach. What is that's what I will tell you, and I keep reminding Joe that uh, Joe Oliveira that you know we're facing a pretty good pitching staff, and and so. Um, that is humbling when you face the, the guys that we're facing, you know, week in, week out. Today we're going to face, you know, four more really good pitchers in our inner squad. And so we have to manage that mentally and, and continue to tell our hitters that we're still pretty good, even though we're facing some really good dynamic pitching. On Friday night, um, I don't know how many innings we played total. I don't know, eight maybe. And we had two hits on from both sides. So, you know, it's pretty good pitching staff, you know. So, uh um, that might help us moving forward. I don't think we'll be f afraid to face anybody either.